you guys give out the black shirts today? Were you special or just kind of had them in the locker room ready for guys to go? No, nope, had them in the locker room ready to go. Uh, coach discussed it uh, a couple of days ago, and then – and then. Um, uh, we we decided to uh, give them you know who to give them out to and then coach said it this morning if, if we were ready to do it and they were in their lockers hanging up so it was really really neat to watch them come out uh, come out the gates with them you know you could see you could see the excitement in their eyes and and uh, they knew what it was about I actually threatened some of them like hey you don't act right you have you have your regular jersey there standing on the sideline so we'll switch that out real quick that's a special special deal around here and. Uh, um, we want to make sure that we we uphold it the right way. There was 12, 12 today. You know, Cam Cam got the Cam got the extra one um, from even from last year uh, coming in here doing and everything he's done in the off season, the summer, fall felt like you know he was a guy who who had earned one as well. So the other eleven are just the, the eleven that are at the top. Yep, yep. The, the the eleven stars. And again, that's not just just the eleven at the top of the depth chart, you know, those guys went back and looked at all the stuff that they had done, mat drills, if they were on the black, if they were, you know, if they were black shirt in the, uh, the off season stuff. And then you go through the summer, the elite list and all those things like that. You know I mean? It was, it, it gets real tricky in there, but, but yes, it was the 11 starters this one. Yeah. What's been the challenge of getting ready for this, this UTEP offense, which you'll mention going in a lot of different spots for film study and all that? Yeah, you can see it when they, especially when they, when they play, when they play the, uh, the, the FCS opponents, the FBS opponents, they, 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 they play to win. You know, you see all the formations, you see the tempo, you see uh, they go for it a lot on fourth down. Um, I mean, you can see it in the, in the play calling, very aggressive. You know, they got a lot of trick plays. Uh, they'll run some fakes on you. They keep you. They keep you on your toes with the PAT field goal block with all the stuff they do there. So they make you work. They make you prepare. So they. They. You know. They. Uh, they're. They're fun to watch on on tape, and it'll be. It'll be a great challenge this week. What gives you confidence in uh, Buford at that one corner spot? Just the versatility he's given you too. Uh, yeah. Plug in different spots. Yeah, he's a veteran. You know, number one, when he came back towards the end of last year, you you saw him play and. Obviously, you saw the maturity, you saw the experience, you saw the playmaker in them, and then um, um, just throughout the course of of Bly being hurt and some of those other young guys, I thought Coach Butler did a great job of moving guys around in there at corner. I mean, between Jeremiah, him, Sierra, uh, I mean, Malcolm going back and forth, cross training some guys, uh, Larry Tarver coming on, did a really nice job of making sure guys got meaningful reps so that way we can we can put guys in there. So just felt like right now you go with the with the five DBs that can that 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 you feel are the most experienced and that can play and you know you couldn't keep them off the field. So that that, that don't mean you won't see them at safety as well. Again all those guys are, are interchangeable. Tell me how much playing El Paso was a place to help shape you in, in football or in life. Yeah it, it it really it really did change my life because you know I grew up in New York and uh, there wasn't any sports around. So then when I went to El Paso, that was the first time that I, I got a chance to play football and be involved in that. And from, from then on, it was, just, it was just all the football grades better, not being a knucklehead off the field. Um, so that my football life started in El Paso. So my second family lives in El Paso. My, my brother, my, my stepbrother, I call him my brother, you know, um, he is, he's like works for the uh, athletic department, the, the district, and so still got a lot of friends over there. So it's a, it's a, it's a special place in Mark. Coach Rule had mentioned yesterday week one and two games are often won and lost defensively because of tackling. Yep. Why is that? I mean, is it more so in week one and two? Maybe why, why not? Yeah, I mean, you saw that, uh, you saw that a lot in the, the games I watched. I watched the New Mexico game, saw that, and then saw the uh, Georgia Tech Florida State game. You saw a lot of, a lot of, a lot of missed tackles. Um, just the speed of the game, guys getting, guys getting used to the speed and, and seeing somebody different and all that stuff. And, you know, uh, of course the, you get the the butterflies in the stomach, and you know it's it's under lights and it's real. But uh, um, that's why the focus is always always on us and making sure that we take care of our business. You know, making sure that that we emphasize tackling from the first thing we do all the time. You know, and putting those guys in position to make sure that they are tackling, that they are aware of what they're doing in practice. So that way, as Coach said today, you know, you you put in all this work so that you can go out there and be confident in what you're going to do on Saturday. So. How has the tackling been, especially in the scrimmages? What have they shown you in that area? Yeah, it's it, it's it's progressed. You know, what I mean, like 
you go and use your first one, it's sloppy, wasn't wasn't good enough. Then the second one, you're seeing guys get to understand like how we want to do things tackling, especially in the open field, you know, out there on all the perimeter screens and all that stuff. Uh, you want to make sure you oh, you overemphasize that because that's what you're going to see uh, this week. So um, it's it's gotten better and better. Is it is it where it's supposed to be? Uh, you know, I. I, I I think we're going to leave that till after the season to say if it was good or not. But right now, you know, the guys are getting better. Guys understand what kind of game it's going to be and why we're emphasizing it so much in practice. So. They haven't named a starting quarterback between Lockley or um, <clears throat> Is there much of a difference between McConnell and Lockley? Yeah, I mean, I get the gamesmanship and all. You know what I mean? We came out and named it. I, I, I get all that stuff. You know, I, uh, you, you see them on tape and you see the differences. One of them may be a little bit better passer, not as not as much of a scrambler, so to speak. And the other one, you know, he's a guy who runs around a lot. You know what I mean? So we prepare for both of them. Um, got a feeling of well, which one it will be. Uh, just looking at the tape and seeing how valuable the quarterback run game is in the, in the offense, you know, so getting a feel for that. But um, um, really, again, at the end of the day, you know, uh, Coach had a great saying, you know, we want to be humble enough to prepare the right way. You know what I mean? Because if you don't respect your opponent, you're going to get beat. That's just that's just football one-on-one. But we want to be confident enough to go out there and do what we're supposed to do. And so um, we've given them different looks. You know, we're preparing for both, and we'll see what happens. Tony, you obviously had to wait two weeks, play two games last year before you could get out of the stadium. Um, what do you think it does for the energy that you guys can generate on defense to actually begin the season out here in front of your fans? Oh, I think it's going to be electric. I mean, uh, you know, again, uh, I think being in Nebraska, you hear about the greatest fan base and, and that kind of stuff. And it, it's just kind of words in the air. But it truly, like, I mean, spring games, 66,000 plus. We weren't getting that when I was at Arizona State in games. You know what I mean? Like, we weren't getting that in Syracuse. You're like, we were not getting that. That that that, w that was not happening. You know what I mean? And so to see 90,000 90, uh, first game of the year, um, I think it's going to be electric. And the just the guys feel it. They know. I mean, they you feel it in the air. Uh, just the uh, just the vibes. I mean, you get you kind of get the goosebumps right now talking about it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great great day in there. Okay. With Dylan being named the starter last week, how has he challenged defense? Oh, he, he, he every which way. You know, he, for as much as he can throw the ball and the different concepts and all that stuff, and keeping everybody keeping everybody. Uh, uh, in tune all the time because he can he can roll out one way throw it back uh, you know against the grain all that kind of stuff. You know, Dylan Dylan's smart like he you know he extends plays and I think one of the things that we wanted to work on last year especially was was the off script plays the guy scrambling around and then finding finding uh, throws down the field you know and so got a lot of practice at that with with him running back there and all and all the quarterbacks doing that to us so um, it's going to be fun to watch him you know. What are uh... Like the last 24, 48 hours, like for you as the D coordinator before an opener, are they different from the other games? Just because you haven't played yet? Or like, how do you That's a great question, man. That, I, it, yeah, you start to get like. You start to get restless, you know. You start to work on the the pin things with the fingers. You know, I start flipping the flipping my pins in my fingers. Like you just start getting antsy and all that stuff. You wonder, like, do you have enough defense? Do you have too much defense? Do you have too little defense? You know, you start just your mind starts going all over the place. But then, you know, you kind of hone in and you look at the guys and, you know, again it goes it goes back to the work that you put in all off season. Uh, this is you know you you studied the opponent the the first four a couple times already throughout the year, and. Uh, and you can feel it out at practice, you know, as you get into the trade periods and, and giving more looks of the opponent, stuff like that. Like, and it just kind of builds up and you get that, you know. I remember the first time I ever called the game, I, I sat down and I was like, man, I don't, I don't think none of this stuff is going to work, man. We might give up 100 points today. And we went out there and, and had six turnovers and did all that kind of stuff. So, you know, your mind just races, but it, it's, a, it's a good feeling. It's, it's football season, right? So it's a good feeling. What's put him in position to get a black shirt? Is relatively young. Yep, he he is O O U. He's all, he's what what this place is all about. What this program is all about, academically wise, um, engineering major. I mean, elite grades, elite process in, in in the classes he's taking and knowing where he's supposed to be and doing the things he's supposed to be doing. You watch him in the off season and he's 100 miles an hour, no excuses, always always uh, uh, in front of the lines, just kind of a low maintenance blue collar guy and then when he goes out there he knows what to do he knows how to do it and then he does it at an elite level you know and he's a great teammate i mean just to, just again OOU if you talk about one of the first guys you mentioned about uh, with the dna of the program it it'll, it would be him
So. Sears only been here for a couple of months. Do you feel like he's taken to the defense, and what kind of work has he put in? Yeah, I mean that's the that's the program he's put he's put in a lot of work, you know, especially to catch up to the guys and all that stuff. And he he's done a nice job, still still growing, still understanding the way things are done here and the way things were done at his old old place are completely different, right? And you know, one of the things that about Sierra is he was told, and I think it's coming to fruition, is that when you come here, you know, you're going to be the best version of yourself. You know, you're going to be the most accountable version of yourself, the biggest, strongest, fastest version of yourself. You know, and then we're going to hold you accountable on the grass because I remember I remember recruiting him in high school and he was one of the top athletes in the country you know what I mean and so we've messed up that process along the way at his first wherever he was you know and then now it's like kind of like a restart for him and it's fun to watch him understand like okay this place is different you know the standards the the accountability hey if I'm supposed to be at a certain weight if I'm supposed to be at a certain hydration if I'm supposed to be wherever I'm supposed to be ready to go like it's just different and it's fun to watch young men see it and and really take to it so I know you guys think a lot of time builds athleticism where does Sierra compare if he's at his top peak athleticism Oh, I, I mean, they're 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 different players. You know, Tommy is, is super athletic, and you you don't realize how how big he is. You know, he could be 210 pounds doing the stuff he he does, which is ridiculous. You know, Sierra is about 180, 185, twitchy, little twitchier, little 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 smaller. So you know, different different in that regards, but still still you got two guys who are who are elite talents. Where's your green dot? Elements? Uh, the green dots will go to. Uh, we're, we're still we're still moving that around just because of the special teams aspect and how many we're going to get and all that kind of stuff. So we're still trying to figure that out. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.